much. Thank you. I have to say, the story that I just heard is one that I hear over and over and over and over and over again, which is unfortunate. And I, I empathize with the women of Japan for what's going on in your country today and over the last year. It's, it's quite, it makes me sad. Uh, it also happened in the United States during the previous um, crisis uh, in, this, in out of New Orleans. So this is not an, an issue that uh, affects just <coughs> countries in, in uh, developing countries, but also as we can hear today, it also is affecting um, countries like Japan, the United States, and others. So we have a big fight to do, and there are people in this room today who have been fighting for this, so I, I hope we can continue to fight it. So. I have a short uh, presentation that I'd like to show you and then a, and a small video clip of uh, a new uh, training program that we've started. Um, I've been working in the UN for uh, here in New York for seven, eight years now on gender programming in humanitarian affairs. And, and our job is, is n not only to come in and respond to an emergency, but today I want to talk a little bit more about what we're trying to do to prepare so that the things that you mentioned today um, took place that we try to prevent. And I believe Ms. Ando's speech at the end very much talked about the importance of doing the work, as we call, upstream. Now that the disasters are, are not around us, but what we do day after day after day to struggle to get on the agenda in order for when those disasters do happen, we are ready to, um, to work together with men to respond effectively to our different needs um, and, and the capacities we bring to bear. So, um, I just, let me just make sure I'm pushing the right button. That one, okay, good. So I want to talk a little bit about preparedness. Um, as, as it's been mentioned, preparedness, this is a tries to capture um, the overall scenario of us day after day when we have uh, a period of time where there are no disasters with that orange um, spark there in the middle and then what happens after. I'm going to talk a, more about what happens in this early phase, obviously what we call the preparedness phase, and what we need to be doing collectively to get on the agenda, to get people trained, to be in the decision making for us. Um, and we have been trying to do this and, and we have been doing it successfully uh, in the Pacific region, for one, close to your home as well as in other places around the world. Um, we certainly have still more to do, but we, we are starting to really make some progress. Um, there are lots of entry points for gender programming in preparedness. Um, we have to find those opportunities and we have to make sure that we're there. We have to uh, beat back and open the doors that are sometimes close to us. Um, as I, your colleague mentioned uh, earlier, there are many gender challenges in, in, in an emergency. Um, there are some, this is a, the scenario in the Pacific, in some of the Pacific Island nations, that there are levels already of gender-based violence that women face every day, so, and will be, as your colleague mentioned, exacerbated during a, 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 a displacement or during a crisis. Um, in some cases, there's high migration, um, and the families are separated. This allow, that leaves some people at home uh, alone to be able to respond to an emergency. We have a lot of barriers for women in, in their access to land, credit, and employment. And that, although it's very clear that women and men, especially at the, at the community level, uh, work well in preparing for disasters. They, they know what they have to do. However, as we, we've just heard from your, your situation, and as well as in other countries, women are usually not at the table, and I was quite astonished to hear there was only one woman in your foras uh, on the national disaster planning organizations, uh, both at national and subnational level. This is where we have to fight to get in the door and be part of part of that planning. This is a, a UN um, related symbol, which says to us, in, in what we do is try to get prepared, and we form in, in many regions um, humanitarian teams. These teams were made up of different actors ready to respond to health needs, to water needs, to sanitation needs, to educational needs. And these structures are, are in place in many countries in the world, ready for getting ready for a disaster. So we work with different UN partners, 
the World Health Organization, uh, the World Food Program, and so forth, and NGOs, international NGOs. Since OCHA's role is basically to see to what degree we can prepare to come into a country on behalf of the government asking our support where, where, where it is needed. Um, some countries don't need uh, additional support and others uh, require additional support. So we're, our job is to um, work with these teams and make sure that they're considering the different needs of women, men, boys and girls in, in the planning for uh, a response to a disaster. Um, these are the kinds of things we do. Uh, is there is always contingency planning. So a terminology that you should get knowing about, there's contingency planning going on in every country who usually uh, experiences disasters, and therefore we look at um, making sure that there's a gender aspect to the scenarios, so scenarios that they're pre preparing, the different roles and responsibilities, and the stand-in protocol. So this is all upstream, this is before the disaster hits. Um, we also have to really work hard to inform uh, from a gender perspective what are the different needs and responsibilities and capacities of women and men and how they can work together. Many people don't see that as, as important, but it's very important to do a gender analysis in, in, in get inside of the tools and pr procedures and mechanisms early on and make sure that we, we make them gender friendly. And then the technical assistance provided to women on the ground as well as to um, national mechanisms to incorporate um, women's concerns and other gender uh, analysis um, mechanisms. So another big tool, and I'm sure you'll have been doing this in Japan and we'll do so in the future, we have what's called simulation exercises. This is a, a, a way to role play, if you were, and what you would do in a disaster. Often these role plays do not include, or these simulation exercises do not include perspectives of women or girls, and um, this is where we need to get in because this prepares people to move forward and, and prepare to respond to a disaster um, collectively. The other thing I was mentioned very clearly by your colleague is that we also get ready to bring supplies in to respond to a disaster. There are certainly supplies that women need versus what men need, um, how they're going to be delivered, who's going to deliver them. All of this is, should be done up front. So um, it doesn't always happen this way, but this is hopefully where we're trying to intervene now, is to make sure that we are influencing the processes before the disasters come. So I also um, thank you very much for that. I just want to show you a small clip of a new, um, it's a, you have copies in the back, it's on a CD-ROM, it's also available on the uh, internet. It's a tool, it's called the e-learning. This is an online learning system, it takes about three or four hours. And it takes you through how we go about um, trying to train our, our partners on the ground to be ready to respond to um, the gender needs of the community uh, about to uh, experience a disaster or as it actually is unfolding. So if we could, yeah, that top one, good. So it's just a little clip about the e-learning that we have available. In the rush to respond to life and death situations, we may lose sight of how a crisis affects women, girls, boys, and men differently. But failing to recognize and respond to these different needs can have serious implications for the protection and survival of the very people we hope to assist. In every society, women, girls, boys, and men play different roles within the family and community and have different levels of access to power and resources. During a crisis, these differences can become even more pronounced, leaving the most vulnerable people even more at risk. The effectiveness of humanitarian response hangs in the balance. So it is up to us as humanitarian workers to respond to a crisis with the necessary knowledge, skills and tools. The Interagency Standing Committee is proud to offer a groundbreaking online training that teaches the essential steps to promote gender equality and respond effectively during an emergency. Travel with us to the fictional country of Hattu, where torrential storms have killed or displaced thousands of people. As one who answers the call to help, immerse yourself in this real-world experience and discover simple, practical and essential methods to improve programming 
and save lives. During this training, based on the Interagency Standing Committee, IASC Gender Handbook, and related IASC guidelines, including the guidelines for gender-based violence interventions in humanitarian settings, and others, you will ask questions and gather data from members of the Hattu community, including Osa, a young boy helping his family rebuild their home, Dina, a woman farmer and single head of household, Marley, a young pregnant woman, and Yakni, a community leader and retired teacher. You will review reports and notes from focus group discussions in eight clusters or areas of work. Access checklists based on the ADAPT and ACT collectively gender framework and use tools to reveal the gender aspects and other significant details of the crisis. Actual case studies and additional resources will help you complete your assignments as you work with virtual colleagues to develop and present gender-sensitive program plans and methods to monitor the results. Those who have already completed the course are free. This training is engaging, educational and relevant. So, prepare to embark on a life-saving mission. No matter your role in humanitarian response, what you learn in Hattu will be of instant and lasting benefit. Learn why gender differences matter, and how greater understanding yields better, more effective results. Take this free training today and receive your certificate of completion. Be among the first to pass this exciting course, and be best prepared for your next assignment.